people becoming a client-centric model. What used to be uh, placing candidates is now going to be um, filling jobs, um, offering solutions, um, not just putting bums on seats. So there's there's a whole massive shift there. Is there anything else that we need to be mindful of as we as we make this this meaningful shift um, in terms of our own business and and our own sort of tech stack? I think the first thing is you need to be aware and very mindful of what's happening in your client base from a talent acquisition point of view. So, because at the end of the day, you know, the talent acquisition team, they want to hire as many people direct as they can and not use agencies. And there'll be an element of where they think they're best and there'll be an element of where they will recognize the agency fits in. But what you used to do pre-COVID isn't necessarily what you need to be doing now. Because where before, you know, you, like you said earlier, you may have the perfect candidate, you get them three interviews, bang, they get, you're going to get a placement. It doesn't, won't work quite like that now. So I think the first thing is to understand who is your customer? What is their talent acquisition setup? What technology have they got? And what are the limitations of that technology? So let's just say you were trying to sell to, or BT was a client of yours. And if you know what ATS, BT have got, and you look at their, and the easiest way to is just go and apply for a job with BT. And if you can see their process is really slow and clunky, and you can see where their vacancies are, which is stuff we do anyway as recruiters, then that gives you an indication as to where their weaknesses are. But then it's really getting involved in that conversation and saying, right, okay, where, let me confirm your weaknesses. Because one thing that um, I'm hearing from large organizations is, don't come to me and ask me what my problems are because you, you, you need to do the research and work it out for yourself. Come to me, tell me what you think my weaknesses are and how you think you can solve them. I can't believe you said that. That is absolute genius, right? I've been banging on to people about being insight selling for as long as I can remember. Long gone are the days we used, used to ask questions all day long. You need to know and have an insight as to what that customer needs from you yeah. long before you pick up the phone. And it's not hard. Yeah. You, know, you can see what their competitors are doing. It gives you yeah. 90% of it, doesn't it? I think yeah. you're genius. Absolutely. And, you, and I, to be you fair, agree I, with me, you're a genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to be the same. I was always big into asking great questions. You've got to ask great questions, not give great answers. But people are saying, stop asking me questions. Everybody wants to ask me what my challenges are. So like I say, you've got to work those problems out for yourself. And then you've got to be able to approach that market with for position of knowledge and look at their technology. And then as an agency, you've got to say, okay, so what technology do we need to do what it is we want to do? So don't necessarily jump on the bot bandwagon if you are really high value, low volume, and that's your, t- and that's your kind of business model. You know, not everybody needs to be as efficient as Amazon at shipping stuff. And at the end of the day, if you're a manufacturer, then most manufacturers are absolutely useless at selling their stuff. Or they're probably okay at selling it. If you ever want to return anything, they're absolutely useless. So you may as well just buy it from Amazon, return it via Amazon, because it's so much easier. And I think that's where, in certain markets, a recruitment agency has got to go, right, we've got to be far more efficient at doing this piece of recruitment than the client can do it. But again, you've got to make sure you focus on the technology that makes helps you do what it is you want to do. Don't just have all the technology. So you yeah. need to make sure that you embed these things to get the value from it and to see how things work. And then make sure people use the CRM properly to actually look at all the rate return and the ROIs and all yeah. these things. Otherwise, you're just spending money. Can I talk about the, this whole talent acquisition piece? If organizations who deal with like high transactional, low value, lots of people... If, if they take a bot on, talent acquisition, they pretty much put themselves out of the job, right? Because yeah. what, 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 what are they doing with that stuff? What, what, what else can they do? Because when it comes to finding super niche uh, uh, talent, well, they don't respond to talent acquisition. Then they have, they, they're working with bespoke, brilliant, um, talented niche players who really know what they're talking about, who've built a providence for being an expert in that marketplace. Where do you think this whole t- TA into a recruitment piece is going at the moment. So the technology vendors that sell to in-house recruitment, they will be selling and pushing more and more automation. The in-house talent acquisition people are requesting more automation. And what will get to a point is where 80% of their hiring 
will be fully automated and there will be few if any people managing that there'll be people managing the system but not managing the candidate relationship the candidate experience and if you look at the concept of open hiring so the body shop started with the open hiring concept they took all the application process out they asked some very very basic questions can you stand up all day can you lift this weight are you available first to fly first apply first hired that's it they turn up on day one they check their um, pay, relevant paperwork rights work criminal record etc in fact they didn't even care about the criminal record and they just hired the first people that got took on that applied and the result was they reduced their turnover for their logistics operation by 60 percent and they reduced the amount of agencies they required by two-thirds so they used to use three agencies to keep their warehouse workers topped up during peak time they only needed one and their labor stayed longer and the, the reason these people stayed longer they said listen i can't normally get a job i've got a job i'm not leaving i'm not going to lose it and it'd be because diversity and inclusion become more important. We want to remove unconscious bias out of the process. Large organizations will strip down the process and just go, yep, whoever applies gets the job. So that is so easy to automate. So easy. There's no decision making in the process. It's happening. There's, there's, again, anecdotal evidence that it's worked for the body shop, but more and more will jump on that process. Where yeah. do you think the talent partners fits this model going forward right so hate to say it but what you've got is you've got 80 percent of the volume of recruiting only delivers 20 percent of the value to the business so with respect to all the hourly paid workers it's a transactional job that piece will be automated but they deliver 20 percent of the value to the business potentially the 20 percent that you can't automate that deliver 80 percent of the value to the business that's where the agencies have got to focus in my view unless you're going to go high volume yourself so that's where the opportunity is and therefore if you think about it if you are a highly skilled person you're probably not actively looking for a job you could good old passive candidate you're more likely to go down the route of talking to a good quality recruitment agent that is talking to two or three competitor organizations. So let's say I work for Cornerstone. I might get approached by a headhunter um, that says to me, look, we're talking to Workday. We talked to Oracle, we talked to SAP. We've got some really interesting opportunities. All three of those, we want to talk to, get, talk to you about moving your career to the next level. Now, I'm not, that's one conversation with one person. Rather than I've got to talk to Oracle, I've got to talk to SAP, I've got to talk to, you know, Workday, etc. So that's where the agency has the place going forward. But it's got to be that personal relationship. Just sending me a couple of emails now and again, it ain't going to work. Um, and also, you, as an agency, you've got to have those connections in those organisations to be able to say to the sales director for SAP, I've got the kind of people you want to be talking to. But that's for the niche. That's the niche end. That's where the talent relationship, the talent partner, will be. But also, don't forget, it, for the open hiring concept, <coughs> it may be. It's very often will be that the agencies can react. They're far more nimble. You know, the large organisations are like oil tankers, and they need something more nimble to give them that agility. So that's where there's an opportunity, I believe, for the recruitment market to say, look we've got the technology in place we don't have to get approval to use a bot we've done it and we've got it working and we've got an open hiring process already in place with there's no bias in our process we are doing the retailing of jobs and the processing of talent far more efficiently than you ever can mr tesco because it will take you two years just to get agreement to get a project up and running in the meantime all your stores are empty so that's where the opportunity is because as more organizations large organizations want that workforce that's totally diverse they they struggle to move quick enough they want to do it but whoever can help them get there quicker there's an opportunity there as well <laughs>